Welcome to session number three. Today we're talking about the best indicator, the best trend, uh, trading indicator by far, by the way, um, part two. So YouTube people, if you somehow landed on this video before you watched my last one, make sure you go back and watch the last one. To the newcomers on the stream this time, welcome. This is a part two, so try to keep up. I understand if you don't, if you don't understand. Um, but we're gonna, um, just same thing as the YouTube people go back, watch the first video. I'll link it down below. Uh, YouTube people join the discord. We have a good community in there. We're pretty active. We're talking all the time and you get these live streams and you can participate and ask questions and whatever, which brings me to my next point. Guys, I told you I would open the floor for some questions before we begin. So my first question to you, how are we feeling? How are we feeling about vector candles? Do you have any questions about the first or second uh, stream so far, or are we okay? Also, I hope you can hear me. I didn't do a mic mic test. <clears throat> Anybody? Can you guys hear me? We can hear. Okay, cool. Yeah, we can hear. Yeah. Beautiful. You guys have questions or no? <clears throat> okay, seems like we're good in terms of questions. Cool. Okay, so uh, I'm going to get started then. And um, same thing as always, guys. If you could keep your mics muted. And at, at any point throughout the stream, I'm going to ask you guys if you have any questions. At that point, if you can unmute. Let me uh, put my phone on silent. And let's get it going. Okay, guys. So today... We're talking Vector Candles Part 2. Um, let me see if I can get a clean chart here. Yeah. So we're doing Vector Candles Part 2. And we're really going to be focusing on where the Vector Candles present themselves. Okay. So if you don't have this indicator, you should. I don't know where you've been. But um, this is the indicator that we're using today. It's called Traders Reality Main. And um, same as last time, we're just building on the first stream. YouTube people, make sure you have this indicator. You're going to need it, okay? And again, I changed my settings a little bit. Yours might look a little bit different, but the premise is the same. So, guys, last stream we talked about vector candles and what's really going on in the vector candles in terms of market maker manipulation. Um, well, quote-unquote manipulation. That's what retail calls it, but we know better because they just go and follow the money, right? So there's no such thing as manipulation. It's just they're going to get the, their money. Uh, we talked about that, but today we're going to focus on <clears throat> where these signals present themselves relative to the EMAs, okay? So EMAs are exponential moving averages for those who may not know. You should know, but uh, for those who may not know, it's exponential moving average. And um, we have a few here, okay? T oh my goodness, sorry about that. My mouse is acting up today, guys. So if that happens, if we jump around quite a bit, I apologize in advance. Anyways, so we have a few EMAs here that you need to take note of, okay? This um, blue EMA, I believe is the 800 EMA. Should be the 800. Yeah, so this, this blue, uh, blue one here is the 800 EMA. So 800 candles back, it's the moving average of the 800. This white... Uh, EMA is our 200 EMA. The 50 is this blue one with the purple cloud. This is what we're mainly going to be discussing today, as well as the five and the 13. Today, we're not really going to be focused on uh, the five or on the 800, the 200. I mean, five and 13 maybe, but more so just the the 50 EMA for now. Okay, I'll do a separate EMA stream or a separate uh, EMA video on YouTube for you guys later. But this is really what we're going to be focusing on right now, okay? So <clears throat> the 50 EMA is a good representation of, of momentum, right? Typically, when price is above our 50 EMA, um, we're in an uptrend, right? And then when price is below our 50 EMA, we're in a downtrend. Now, the significance of the 50 EMA is, I would say that, especially on like the one hour, um, you know, it, it's a it's a very, it's a dynamic support and resistance, yes. But you know, price tends to stick to it and come come around it. Um, it's essentially the mean of the price, right? Like over time, it is the mean of the price. It is dynamic enough 
for price to kind of dance around it. But it's not uh, unlike, for example, the 800 EMA where it's like way down here and, and you don't really get too much information from that. Um, anyway, so let's talk about the 50 EMA. Now, as I mentioned, when you're when price is below, right, we're in a downtrend. This is important to know because when you're seeing, we're going to use this as the example here. When you're seeing vectors break below uh, the 50 EMA, and this is on the one hour time frame. This works on all time frames, but obviously keep in mind the lower the time frame, the like you have to adjust your your type of trading. So this is our red, uh, our first red vector candle that breaks below the 50 EMA. This right here is a strong signal for price to continue downwards. So in other words, what you want to see is you want to see the vectors appearing above or below the 50 EMA in the direction that you're like looking to trade. So here, let's just say you shorted from here, right? Let's just say hypothetically entered a short position from there. When you see this 50 EMA, or sorry, sorry, uh, this red vector, strong red vector below the 50 EMA, this is a, it's a signal of strength, okay? And market makers like to move in threes. Um, three is a very significant number when it comes to trading. It's just, it's, it's based around psych psychology um, and like human psychology. So I'm sure you guys know the Wyckoff distribution and whatever, like the patterns that we're looking for, right? The, the, um, the, the threes, like the number three is very significant. And this is a good example of it here. So in this case, we have three vector candles to the upside. Now this was a fake out. Um, you would have to look at the other EMAs and your other confluence. This is resistance up here. So, you know, you wouldn't necessarily expect us to just break through and fly, but I want you to notice that there are three candles here, okay? We can go back in the chart and we can find other instances, right? Now, it's not always exactly three to the T, but we need to be aware of it and we need to be aware that they like to move in threes. So here, you could say this was one push up, this was two pushes up, and this was three pushes up, okay? So it's not necessarily just based on the candle. Keep in mind, you can jump between different time frames, and this um, presents itself across all time frames. So you, you'll be able to see, for example, three pushes up on the four hour, on the five minute even, if we zoom really in, you know, you can you can see, look at this. Right, super simple, one, two, three candles, shift back down, right? So they like to move in threes, um, and that's just, look at this, right? One, two, three. It's not always on the number of candles, but you need to be aware of the number of candles. You also need to be aware that it's like the, the uh, overall sections, the overall moves, right? One, consolidate, two, consolidate, and then three, and then shift out, right? So that's important to know. Let's go back to our uh, four hour, I believe is where we were. Oh, don't mind this. I was doing, uh... <clears throat> oh, these were the candles I did earlier. Okay. So now that we know that, oh, sorry, actually I need to go on the one hour. So now that we know that market makers like to move in threes, we know the strength if the price is above or below in whichever direction we want of the 50 EMA. That's what we're looking for. Look at what happens when you start to get vectors. Um, I mean, this was a crazy day. We talked about this last time. Look at what happens when we start to get vectors um, when we're under the 50 EMA, right? So let's use this as a good, good example. So here we break the 50. We have a big vector candle. Like this is a big candle. Let's see how much, right? 3% candle kind of consolidate a little bit and we have a nice slow bleed, right? Here we have another red vector, 2% two, 2 whatever, compared to these vectors here, right? And if you were to take our three principle, we have one, two, three. In this case, it happened to just be like just the candles, not necessarily overall moves, 
but it's something to keep note of, right? You need to count the candles. You need to count the overall pushes. But look at how on, when we're under the EMA, the, the vectors coming down are, are greater, especially this one and like these ones over here, especially this one, are greater than um, the vectors coming up, right? It's because these vectors are just coming back into the 50 EMA, whereas these ones are expanding from the EMA, giving us a strong push downwards, right? So as we, um, you know, get our, our green vectors, we get we get shot back down. Rejection off the 50. Spike up, fake everybody out, rejection. Spike up, rejection. Spike up, rejection. So when price is around the 50 EMA, um, we are, we're really looking for some, some sort of expansion, right? And as you can see, guys, this is the one hour time frame. Like this, this took time. This took three days. We just danced around for three days. Now, that's not to say you can't take scalps and whatever in between that time. Obviously, like you jump into your lower time frames, you can go look at the market cipher video that I made and, uh, you know, whatever the case is. But let's just say you're a day trader and you're looking for an entry. I mean, as a day trader, you're not really, there's not really much going on here, right? Nothing's really happening. And we're, we're very close to our, uh, to our EMA. So it's important to be, to know that when you're, when you're close to the EMA, you know, you're, you could get fake outs and, and whatever the case is, but generally we're looking for expansion, right? Look at how, um, <clears throat> so we dropped, right? Big vector, smaller vectors, right? Right. We rejected. And then three days later down the line, when we're ready to shoot up, we start to fire, right? We have a larger vector than like, I mean, this one was pretty big, but this was coming back into our, into our EMA, but we're starting to get large vectors, right? A little fake out here. That's fine. And then we shoot and we shoot. And if you were to use the principles of three, we have one, we're not going to count the pink one, two and three. As soon as we have our blue vector candle, as we learned in the last one, we, um, Vo tick volume started to decrease and we consolidated until we got more of a push up bam right this day again i don't really believe in manipulation they just like run for their money so whatever terminology you choose to use but this day was a wild day it's not the best example this was the craziest trading day i've ever seen but so it's not the best example um but they just made a run for their money right and the point is once it's above the EMA, that's when the move starts to go. So let's use today as an example, right? Let's use right now as an example. <clears throat> we were above the EMA. Man, these circles are so ugly. We were above the EMA. We had our three pushes. We had some stopping candles and we're in resistance here. Remember, this is resistance. We break below the 50 EMA, big red vector, dance around, whatever. These green vectors are not the sign to go long right away because you're coming right into the EMAs. Zeus, do you mind muting your mic, bro? And Randy too. I don't know. Someone's making a little bit of noise in the background. Just want to make sure that we're good. Cool. Thank you. So this, you see this green, or yeah, this green vector. And by the principle of three, right? Let's just say you see this. You're like, okay, well, market makers should be going one more and one more right? But you don't, you, you can't really trust it because this, this is just the momentum coming back into the EMA, which can shift you back down. So if anything, if I see these EMA, these uh, green vectors, they're hitting our EMA at some point, especially while on market cipher, we have some downward momentum and money flow in this period coming down. I would expect them to come back and grab this liquidity. Um, if the true move is to move up, I would expect them to come back and grab this before they do continue to move up, right? And then if their true move is to move down, then they're going to come back down for it anyway because it's located below the EMA, right? So <clears throat> what happened? We consolidated a little bit. We had a little flash crash there. We recovered our vector, right? This was yesterday, I believe. I'm very mad. I missed this long by 
Actually, I wanted to long over here and I missed it by like $50. I'm very upset. Anyway, um, yeah, so we came back and we grabbed it. We danced around the 50, A, some, 50 EMA some more, and then we had our blue vector candle, right? So the blue vector right now is not, um, it's not, it's, it's kind of 50-50 because our previous candles, we have some uh, vectors, some regular candles, whatever. So we don't really know in this candle if, we, if tick volume is increasing um, or if it's, I guess, decreasing, because these averages, like, it's kind of iffy, right? Not everything is, is perfectly set in stone, but it's kind of iffy. So what we would want to see is the first green vector candle. I mean, not necessarily just green, like blue is a good indication too, but it's, it's, it's like, okay, wake up. Like, we got to start paying attention. So we want to see uh, you think Discord is dinging on your end? Is it dinging? It shouldn't be. Let me see if I can mute the server. Okay, it should be muted now. Sorry about that, Randy. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, um, I think we're okay now. <clears throat> okay, it's fine. Okay, sorry for that interruption, guys. Um, okay, yeah. So what we want to see are the... Are, are, vectors uh, present themselves above the EMA when we're ready to go long and keep in mind like you know I taught you guys last time to use an environmental time frame right like if you're using your one hour for the environmental when we start seeing money flow slowly coming up we have some green dots here like we know that okay we're, we're, we're favoriting longs right once we see this blue vector um, we're feeling pretty confident, right? So now you, you're safe in your long and you feel good. What we want to see is follow through, okay? We want to see maybe a blue vector and then we want to see our, our three concepts. We want to see big vector, two, three, whatever. Maybe not that high, but that's what we want. We want to see something like this, but bigger and follow through, right? Now it didn't happen because we're in resistance, but that's what we want to see. This is what we want to see, look. First green vector to take uh, to take the the fifty EMA. It wasn't a full clean uh, break of it because this body was like below it. So we broke it. We came back to retest. Doesn't always happen. And then we start to shift out. Right. Like look at these moves. So here you don't really want to be thinking. Oh, let's short because we have. Yes, we have vectors, and yes, they're likely to recover the vectors. But money flows increasing. And if we use our three concept, they hit three, right? But this move could also be considered one, two, and then keep in mind we're in resistance and this is like an uncommon situation, but three, right? We could have hit up our 32, the 32 target I've been saying for like, I don't even know how long now, three weeks, four weeks. We could have came up and, and, and done that. So this is how you need to think. Um, whether or not they're going to really like make a comeback for, for liquidity. So don't always just be like, oh man, like we pumped so much here. We're consolidating. We have to come back. Like, yeah, we could have, but it's not necessarily required. We're favoring longs because money flows thick and we're above the EMA. Okay. Whereas if we start to see, this is a very good example here for this case when we have when we're above the 50 ema excuse me and we start to see red vectors above the ema where we can it's safe to assume again guys like i'm not going to keep saying this every week nothing is for sure this is the last time i say it but i'm just not that you guys are giving me attitude about it but i'm just saying so i don't have to keep repeating myself like it's safe to assume that when we're getting red vectors into the 50 EMA, or in this case, because this day was kind of an anomaly, below the, the EMA, it's safe to assume that we're going to bounce off of it or near it, along with our other confluence, and come back and take that vector, right? So that's what we want to see. And here's an example of it. And it's not always big candle, guys. We know that volume isn't always crazy present. We're above our 50 EMA. We have our per pink stopping volume candle. Sure, whatever. Here we get a red vector, but we get a red vector into our EMA. So are you going to just short here 
Like you could, I'm not, it depends on what's going on in the smaller time frames. I'm not, we're not going to get into that much detail today, but you know, we have to be aware that if you short here, price can come close to or around this whole cloud even, right? And, and give us a bounce. And, you know, let's just say you shorted from where the line is and you put your stop loss like up here, which I don't know why you ever would, you would have got stopped out a few hours later with this pink pink uh, stopping volume candle, right? So this is why it's important to know um, about where the placement of vectors are. This vector candle here, this this uh, one hour vector, like same, same kind of deal. Look at how, I'm gonna zoom in. Look at how the candle recovered the green vectors. In, in a real uptrend, what we want to see is this and then continue to move upwards. Maybe not completely take these, maybe like this. That's what we want to see. In this case, we didn't get it. That's okay. Look at how we have a red vector coming into the 50 EMA. It bounced off the, you know, a couple hours later, whatever. Some it's We're close to the EMA, close enough. And then price came back up and recovered 50% of this vector before com completing the shift down. This is important because the people that, Keep in mind, these are vectors, right? So retail is shorting this whole way, whatever. If you see this and you're like, oh man, we broke the 50 EMA. This is like how retail thinks. And I'm never going to shut up about this. They're so stupid. Like everything that you think you've been taught is wrong. Everything. They go, oh man, we broke the 50 EMA. This was key resistance, whatever. Like let's, let's short it from here. Well, you can't really short a red vector candle coming into the EMA if it's above because... I mean, objectively, like we're still, we have potential to keep doing that, right? So we came up and recovered the the um, vector. And then now is when you would jump into the lower term time frames and be like, okay, if I see, if I start seeing bear divs here, then I can maybe think like we might continue downwards. That's when you have to assess the market, you know, use the confluence of your levels, et cetera. But um, that's the concept of, of the vectors. So here too, like, you know, are you gonna, are you gonna crazy long at any point here? Well, probably not because I mean, how much can you, can you really gain? And, and this is on the hourly time frame. So obviously everyone trades different, but if you were to, if you were to long here, the, the concept of red vector below the EMA, come back to retest it and then continue shifting down is still in play. So anyone that longed here, all of these wicks got absolutely wrecked. And look at that, like you guys got, well, not you, but, uh, oh, I hope not you, but these guys got wrecked, right? Here, we're not looking for, we're not looking for crazy green vectors below the EMA and to keep shooting to like 30K. We're not looking for that because we're under the EMA or we came from under it. We want to see something like this right? We want to see this where we're at the 50 and then we start getting the EMAs shifting out and you can wait for follow through. Like it, things take time, right? Here we didn't get, a, like I said a couple times already this stream, we didn't really get the follow through that I, I wanted, but we're also at key resistance here. So I did catch, um, no, I did not catch that short. I don't believe so, but we're in massive resistance. So that's something to consider as well when you're, um, you know, doing your technical analysis and you're finding confluences and stuff. If you are new here, guys, I did not do a technical analysis like levels and stuff stream yet. Next week, I'm going to show you guys how I trade ranges. So a lot of this is going to come together then. But this is generally the concept. This is the idea of the vectors, right? And where they present themselves holds a lot of weight. Okay, our crazy pumps that we get are above the 50 EMA. Our crazy dumps that we get are below the 50 EMA, right? Like you don't necessarily want to short here. Yes, it worked out, but we're in hindsight right now. Just like how you don't necessarily want to long here because it look where it came from, right? Like you need to see where it came from in relevance to it. And are they likely to come back and grab that liquidity? This here right now doesn't look to me like they, they want to come back and grab this liquidity because you know, we, we, sure, we chilled here for a couple hours, whatever. Um, this, let me zoom in. 
We're on the hourly. This wicked up to, I mean, just shy of half of that vector. And then we had a strong candle, right? A strong candle up. And there's no other vectors here. Like if there were some vectors here, I would think, okay, maybe they're gonna, they're above the EMA. They tested it. They are going to test it again, fake everybody out, give us some, some wicks and then come up and grab that liquidity. But there was no liquidity here, right? Whereas the people that have been longing here in these vectors don't take profits. They, and the market makers need to grab their money, right? They're going to make a run for liquidity. So in this case, when we absolutely rip down in my mind, there's no reason for them to come back up here. We're, we're kind of getting wrecked by this 50 EMA and it's aiming so downwards. Like that's a strong EMA to the downside. So the furthest that I would expect this to go, obviously, again, we're going to use other confluences, but the furthest I would expect this to recover is 50% of the candle or give or take, like, you know, maybe 60, 70% of it, whatever that percentage is. Something like that. That's what I would expect. And then we would keep an eye out for an additional move downwards. And this is the same, and it holds true with all time frames. And similar to how vector candles are recovered um, on uh, sooner on the smaller time frames, and they take longer on the larger time frames. You know, the 50 EMA. If we come to the five minute time frame, like it all the time where we break up, we break down. Like so, it's it's more convincing on the larger time frames because it takes longer to actually break through it. And look at this. This is a good example of, I think, what was this? A couple days ago? Yesterday? Yesterday uh, in the afternoon for me. Look, we had, we were, we, we are above the 50 EMA and we, and that's when we start to get our big moves. Rarely do we see big moves come from like here to here. Like we're not going to see, you're not going to see this rarely. Like I don't, doesn't really happen. So that's um, <clears throat> where vectors are important. Does anyone have any questions? No? No, I think you covered that well. So that's why there w won't be much okay. questions. Okay, cool. Good. Um, yeah, so... It, well, I mean, that was a short stream. So if you guys get it, um, let me just throw in the five and the 13 real quick. And actually, we'll talk about all the EMAs very quickly. And, and I'll do a separate video on uh, just for YouTube. Like it won't be a stream on the EMAs. But since we're here and, and this was kind of a shorter stream, we'll talk about this. So 200 EMA is a little bit more static than um, all the other EMA or sorry, 800 EMA, a little bit more static. Obviously, it takes longer to move nothing crazy about it. It's just support and resistance. Um, same with the 200. It's a little bit more um, dynamic than the 800. 50, we just went over, but let's talk about the 5 and the 13. Okay. So the 5 and the 13 are these lines here. The uh, yellow is the 5 and the red is the 13. Okay, I think I think I got that right. I should have. Anyway, um, yeah, the the significance of the five and the thirteen. Don't use them so much as support and resistance, like you would with the fifty or the larger EMAs. You would use this as um, kind of an indicator of where momentum is. Okay, so I shift. I moved over to the uh, one hour time frame, so it's not so up and down. It's a little bit easier to see, but let's use this as uh, an example. Okay, so I mentioned prior that when the vectors are above the fifty EMA, we want to see continuation, right? We want to see price keep moving up. Now, how do we know if we're gonna maybe start to see that, right? Well, it's the five and the 13. So when the five, which is the yellow, I yeah, the yellow, when the five crosses the red, 
we're starting to get a shift upwards. And sure enough here, I mean, it was a little bit, it was a little bit iffy. We crossed and we crossed back again, whatever. Um, but once we crossed, that's when we started to get our vectors into our 50 EMA, right? So um, alongside, and we also want to look at our market cipher B and we want to look at our money flow. So we start to see that this is starting to cross up along with our green dot, along with money flow getting higher over time, this is where we can start to expect, you know, our vectors in. And the same is true for when uh, you're going the other way, right? So here we have, I, I mean, the EMAs are a little bit lagging. There's no, that's not a secret. But once we have our cross of our EMA and price starts coming towards our 50 EMA, it's likely that we're going to break down because momentum has changed here, right? Like if you were to put all the confluences together, I said earlier, right? We had the red vector. We recovered the vector, 50%. Now we have the EMAs crossing, right? We're at a high point on the hour. And, um, you know, we dance around the EMA for a little bit before we get a huge move down. Are you going to long here? I don't know. It I can't say because it's not real time right now. I would have to go into the lower time frames and kind of assess what's going on. In this case, uh, like the answer, obviously, you shouldn't have longed. It's easy to say that in hindsight. But when you put all these together, all these like confluences together, and this is, guys, without even levels and stuff. Like this is just indicators. When you put all that together, you know, it's not really too difficult to be able to um, kind of see where we're going. And that's why I like using the one hour as my environmental time frame. I do go up to the four hour just because I like to see what's going on. But I do enjoy using the, the one hour um, because I find that it gives, you know, pretty accurate sync signals, right? Like you wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't typically want to be looking for longs here. So that's kind of, um, you know, the significance of the five and the 13, you want to be looking in the direction of momentum and kind of use it with confluence in rel relevant or sorry, relative to your 50 EMA, um, as well as your vector candles here. Got that? Comprende? <clears throat> si, senor. Cool. Since this was a quicker stream, I'm going to touch on one more thing, um, which is the Brinks box. Those of you in the Discord, you've heard me mention the Brinks box a few times. And I'm just going to very briefly explain what the Brinks box is, why it's significant, and when it occurs. Okay. So I mentioned to you guys that I changed my uh, settings for this indicator. For you, it's going to probably say US Brinks. For me, I just made it USB. So it's less cluttered. And this is EUB, which is Euro Brinks. Same concept, but US is like, they do more crazy moves and I'll elaborate now. Okay, so New York opens at 9.30 in my time. I apologize, I don't know everyone's um, time zone. But 9.30 EST is where New York opens, as we can see by this New York here. The Brinks box occurs 30 minutes before and 30 minutes after it's open. Typical um, Brinks box, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Activity, I guess, is like this is where they spike around the most in this zone. And, it, and by the way, it's not just this zone. It's like give or take close to this zone. So in this case, they did some like, you know, spiking here, drop, drop, pull back up, whatever. But we need to be aware, I would say, from like here, from maybe 8 a.m. to like, I don't know, 1030-ish, we need to be aware that the market makers like to basically trick you. This is where all the stop hunts happen. This is where all the like snakery and the quote unquote manipulation happens. It's in the Brinks box. Okay. And the reason it's called the Brinks box is because, um, I don't know if you guys have it in England. I'm, I mean, I'm sure you do, but the Brinks truck is the truck that carries the money to and from the banks. And so it's called the Brinks box because this is the money trade. Now this happens every day, uh, during the week. So Monday to Friday happens every day. 
and it is considered the money trade because they will spike up, spike down, do whatever, and then they will do their true move. Okay, in this case, it happened a little bit before, right? We had our green vectors and then, you know, whatever, 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 and then we shifted down. And really for the rest of the session, which is now like New York closes in 20 minutes, we, we, we came down and we never really expected that move back up, right? We never had it. Today is not a great example of the Brinks because, you know, not too much happened. But if we come back to other Brinks boxes, um, let me see if I can find a good one. You can see that they do this. Look at this. This is a perfect example. So this white box here is the Brinks box, right? Right before they, we have three vectors. Guys, this is important. Like we have three vectors to the upside, but you also need to be aware that we're in the Brinks box, okay? Like you need to be aware of this time period every day um, around this time zone, right? So we have three green vectors followed by a red vector. This is our first clue that, uh, well, first of all, market makers are present because we have vectors, but this is our first clue that we're likely to come up right? This red vector. Market maker is trapping retails to retail, sorry, um, to go short here, right? So this is the first clue that we have that we're going to shift out of the Brinks box. What happens? We get a lot of spiky behavior, as you can see, down, up, down, up, down, up, right? A lot of spiky behavior. And a lot of vector candles are presenting themselves around this time. Hello, good morning, Mr. Market Maker. I see you, right? What happens here? We have another shift below this is this is important too because as i just mentioned you want to see this for continued moving to the downside right we want red vectors to be below the 50 ema keep in mind this is the five minute time frame guys this is not on the one hour um but typically what you want to see this and you want to see follow through however because market maker left this red vector behind and we're starting to get some green dots here on the bottom. And I know it's the Brinks box and I know that they're wicking around. Um, you know, I actually believe I did catch this or no, this is the one that I missed by a few dollars. I wanted it to come like here, but anyway, um, this is how, you know, are like the clues to go long as opposed to going short and look at these candles, look at these wicks. This is market maker trapping all of retail to go short. Retail's like, oh, we're under the 50 EMA, whatever. Again, it's not the best example because it's the five minute, but the same same concepts apply. And because they left this behind, I'm under the assumption that they're going to run it up. And they do. So Brinks box is important to know that time, time period, whatever your time zone is, write it down, like put it on a sticky note on your screen, put it on your forehead, I don't care. I'm going to start calling it out for you guys every day in the Discord. Um... I just didn't before because I didn't want to confu confuse you guys and before I got to it. I will make a separate video in more detail as well on the Brinks box. So my YouTube is going to start having not just these streams, but, you know, single videos that I make on the side, in including different tutorials for different things and different strategies, etc. But that's the Brinks box in a nutshell. In my experience, the U.S. Brinks is more... Um, I guess, significant than the Euro brinks, but you need to be aware of this time period. You need to be aware that they do this kind of thing, okay? They, they purposely try to get you. So if market cipher A or B, sorry, is looking like, oh man, I need to go 100x long right now and you're in the brinks box, like don't you dare do it because they will wick up, they will wick down and like, you know, you'll get, you'll get wrecked. So that's something important to note as well. Any questions in terms of the brinks box? Mm. All right, then I will take it as a compliment once again. Guys, I appreciate you guys joining the stream. I think that is the USB box like that by default. No, the, the, the Brinks box is like the same. This is always going to be the, the Brinks box. It's going to be from 9 to 10 a.m., but we want to be mindful of it from a little bit earlier and a little bit after. Um, but for me, it just I just changed it in my settings to say USB because I know what USB, like it stands for US Brinks. Um, but yours will look like this, I think, right? Like it'll look like that. 
<clears throat> I just, I don't want so many words on my screen and whatever. So I just made it USB. And for, uh, for e EUB is Europe Brinks. But aside from that, it's all the same. And same with like these labels, right? Like SY is Sydney, Asia is Asia, LN is London. I just don't want the whole word because it clutters up my, my, uh, my charts. And I don't really want to like deal with that. My charts can get already like pretty messy as is. Wait, that's not even the one. Yeah, like my charts can get pretty messy. So, you know, I want to, I try to clean it up as much as possible. <clears throat> all right guys last call any last questions or are we okay how are you guys feeling maybe if it's not just a question but in terms of uh vector candles you guys i, I taught vector candles a couple days ago now are you guys at least seeing and understanding what's happening in these vector candles yeah 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 um uh i'm looking about the Krunen move and uh uh According to that, what you said, I think uh, if we're not gonna get a green vector from the last candle, what what you just have at the middle of the screen, mm -hmm. the EMA uh, uh, five gonna cross with uh, fifty, and we're gonna have a dump. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, we very well could have a dump. Um, I don't know, to be honest with you. I don't really know what's going to happen right yeah, now. Yeah, same, same. I'm, I'm just kind of speculating because yeah. that's not going to, uh, you know, we, <laughs> we're not going to get significant move in here. And I think vector, uh, green vector candle could uh, save us. Yeah. Those EAMA is going to cross with the 50 and that might cause uh, another dump. Yeah, absolutely. I probably am, am more on, um, if I'm being honest, I'm more on the bullish side than on the bear side. You know, the four hour, the money flow is coming up. We're looking good. You know, we have this purple vector to recover. I can see something, even if, if this was the whole dump right here, I can see this coming up and taking this vector up here, taking these highs. I can see that happening. Like I said, I've been calling for 32K um, for a while now. And I don't remember who it was in Jason's Discord, but was like, I'll bet my life that Bitcoin will be 25K by tomorrow, actually. So... I'm going to go back and, and definitely be like, yeah, man, I don't know about that. Cause I told him that, <laughs> that last week that I didn't, I didn't think that we were going to get there, but I mean, it is what it is. So we'll see, we'll see what happens, uh, with the guy with the harmonic. Yeah. I don't know who it was, but I'll go back and, and I'll do what I do. I'm petty like that. Not that we argued or anything, <laughs> but anyways, guys, um, yeah, that's today's video. I appreciate you guys joining the stream for the YouTube people like comment and subscribe and guys hit the bell you know get the notifications early um and to get the the notifications even earlier join my discord the the link is down below we have a good community like i said at the beginning we're pretty active and um you know i'm gonna start giving signals there not signals because i don't want to influence anybody but i'm gonna start you know, posting what I'm looking for, my levels and such. And once I teach you guys how I trade ranges, all this will come together and uh, it'll make a lot more sense. So make sure you join the Discord down below. Make sure you hit like, you subscribe, comment, do all that you can. Give me the watch time. I really appreciate it if you do. I'm giving you guys good value here for free. So that's all I really ask for. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Guys, I appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the chat. I'll open up the public lounge for anyone that wants to share their screens or have a conversation or whatever, but let's keep doing what we're doing. I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time.